Okay. All right. We're recording. Okay. So thank you guys for coming today. We have another core and mobility, strength and mobility, whatever you want to call it. This one is more focused on core. Um, this is an awesome one for you guys in the restaurant industry. I know not all of you guys are, but um, anybody in the service industry or any job where you're walking around all the time, maybe not doing tons of manual labor like a construction worker, um, but restaurant servers, school teachers, different people that are on their feet all the time, maybe sometimes experience low back pain. We are going to build a little bit of tension with our core work, and then we're going to release it all with some mobility work. We've got four total circuits today. Um, like I said, your focus is not gonna be to get your heart rate up today, um, but instead I want you to pick one thing to challenge yourself with. It can be whatever you want, but I would like to recommend that you choose to challenge your breath and to stay connected with your breath the entire time and just to be really aware of it. If nothing else, just pay attention to it and how it affects your movement and your mobility through our sun salutations, our hip openers, and our twists, um, as well as our core work. Um, so stay connected with it. Make sure you're not stress breathing shallowly in the chest. Bring it down deep into the belly. That's gonna shoot more oxygen out to your muscles and really focus on making that exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. And that exhale is when you're gonna be able to move a little bit deeper into your pose or into your move to work on that flexibility. So just because you're getting, you're, we're not getting our heart rate up as much, you definitely still should be challenging yourself. It still should be hard just in a different way because you're challenging your mobility and your flexibility. Okay, so let's get started. Um, have a water by you if you want. Um, like I said, the only other thing you might want is a mat, but again, not required. You'll be totally fine without one. Um, we're going to start just by warming up the core with a front plank. So go ahead and come down to your elbows. If you're not getting down on your elbows today, you can stay in that top of push-up hold. You want to come down to those elbows. I want you to keep your heels close together. We're going to go ahead and bring those knees up whenever you're ready. So we're going for a tempo of breath. We're gonna go for 10 breaths. Squeeze your glutes. Squeeze your armpits. Once you hit 10 breaths, go ahead and drop those knees. We're gonna come into a quadruped horizontal. So I want hands under elbow, under shoulders, knees under hips. You guys have done this before. I'm gonna show you this way. We're bringing up opposite hand, opposite leg. You can't see my leg very well because I'm not putting it too high. I don't want anybody's low back to be arched. You're one long line. So we're right here for 10 breaths. The best way to kick this one up a notch is to move your hand and knee more in one line. Anytime you decrease that base of support, you're gonna make your move harder. Think almost pigeon-toed with that back foot, keep those hips really square. All right, go ahead and switch sides when you're ready. Breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Your breath should be about two to three seconds each. All right, you guys, we're gonna flip over onto our backs. We're gonna do 10 breaths of an isometric hip bridge. So. This seems easy, but I want you guys to focus on one thing, and that's your knees trying out and over your pinky toes, okay? So don't focus so much on how high you can get your hips, as much as squeezing your glutes, trying the knees over the pinky toes. Make sure those palms are facing the sky. 
create as much tension as you can here. We don't have very much core work today. This is our last move. We're gonna go through that circuit one more time. Keep squeezing. Keep prying those knees. Three, two, one. All right, roll back up. We're gonna flip back over to that plank. If you start to feel that plank in your low back, drop the knees and just go on your knees, okay? All right, let's bring those knees up in three, two, one. Squeeze, squeeze. You're creating as much tension in your entire body as you possibly can. Wow, still breathing. <laughs> All right, when you're ready, see if you can get that hand and knee a little bit more in line than last time for this quadruped horizontal, okay? 10 breaths. Squeeze those glutes to help stabilize the hips. Squeeze the armpit of your planted arm all that tension. And when you're ready, switch sides. See how in line you can get. One side is always going to be better than the other. <laughs> that foot flexed. That'll help keep your abs engaged. All right, you guys, when you're ready, flip back over for one last hip bridge. If you have a band and you wanna put it around your knees for this, totally great. All right, let's try those knees, squeeze those glutes, and get the knees over the pinky toes. We're just more thinking about it. Pay attention to your low back. Make sure it's not hyperextending at all. You're almost tucking your tailbone, but you don't want to round your low back either. If anyone can see my stomach, you can see it blowing up like a balloon with every breath. You want to make sure you're using your tummy. All right, one more big breath here. And drop the hips. Thanks, right, you guys. If you want to hug the knees in for a second while we're here, do so. We're going to move into our sun salutations. So when you're ready, roll up, we're gonna start standing. And if I'm not mistaken, this is actually, I think the only standing, only thing we have standing today. So you are going to come to the top of your mat. I'm gonna show you guys from the side um, just cause it'll be easier to see what I'm doing. Is the volume still okay? You can just give me a thumbs up. Yeah, okay, it, for some reason it's so loud to me. <laughs> okay. So what I'm gonna do, guys, we're gonna go through this a couple of times. Um, there's just a few moves. Um, follow me, we're gonna go really slow at first and really sink into the moves. And then we're gonna get the flow going a little bit quicker. Um, some of these poses are yoga poses. I don't teach like a yoga instructor because I'm not a yoga instructor. I'm not gonna get into a flow like you would at a yoga class. Um, just remember with all of these moves, you guys, this is for your body. So I'm gonna give you all of the cues that I can, but if something that's a little bit different than what I'm saying feels better for your body, then do it. It's your workout, your way. Okay, so we're gonna start with that extended mountain pose. So go ahead and 
bring the hands up. We're gonna get a small arch in the upper back. Squeeze your glutes as you arch. Protect the low back. And then we're gonna forward fold. Bring those arms down. Shift the weight of your body into the balls of your feet. Remember, we're gonna hang out in each pose a little bit longer for this first, first round. I really want you to focus on relaxing your lower back, your sacrum. Really just sink into your hips. And then you can either step back or jump back into a down dog. So plant your hands, raise those hips to the sky. It's okay if your knees are bent, but I want you to keep that back flat. To bend your knees to keep it flat. That's a okay. And I want to talk about this pose for a second. We're going to be here for a sec. Down dog is so awesome for pretty much the whole back side of your body your calves, your hamstrings, your hips, your glutes, your back, your shoulders. I want you to keep popping your butt into the sky if you're trying to like stick it out. <laughs> The more you do that, the more you'll feel the stretch creep up into your hips. If you want to pedal the feet, you can. Just find what's feeling good for your body today. If you want to take your feet wider, you can. If you want to have them narrow, you can. There's a lot of different things you can explore with this. Another thing I want you to think about is sliding your shoulder blades down your back, AKA relaxing the shoulders and relaxing the neck. All right, we're gonna roll one vertebrae at a time to that top of the chip hold. Before you lower down in plank, because I know that's what we typically do, you're gonna bring one leg up into a lunge. Remember which leg you bring up. I have my left leg up here. Now I want you to sink those hips. Let them come down. Just let gravity pull your hips down into the ground. If you wanna drop a knee, you totally can. Whatever feels good to you. You can kind of rotate the hips a little bit here and see where it feels best. You're getting opposite stretches on these, on these hips right now. Your planted leg, you're stretching the front, that extension. Your folded leg, your folded hip, you're getting flexion in there. So keep thinking about gravity, pulling those hips down. And when you're ready, inhale as you bring both feet to that forward fold. You should feel even maybe 0.1% more flexible than you were last time we were at forward fold. So here I want you to notice if you let your head drop, it deepens the stretch as your body takes, as your um, muscles take on the weight of your head as you relax it. And you should be able to even feel that maybe in your upper back a little. That should feel good. If you want to ragdoll your arms, you can, you can rotate. Again, just kind of explore what feels good for your body. Remember to make those exhales longer than your inhales and then slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. And that's our flow. So we're gonna go a little bit quicker this time. Mountain pose, squeeze the glutes as you get a little extension in that upper back, dropping the shoulders and down into forward fold. You can step or hop back to top of push-up hold and into down dog. And you get to play with down dog here for a minute. Whatever feels good to you. Breathe deep and raise the belly. You relax the shoulders, slowly roll over to top of push-up hold. Take the opposite leg that you did last time. So right leg if you're with me this time. Watch my hips as you sink down into it. 
Gravity pulls you down. Remember, you can plant the knee if you like. Find a good spot for you. Stay connected with the breath. Make sure it's deep in the belly. If you've planted that knee, bring it back up onto your toes and then step forward into that forward fold. And slowly roll up. All right, we're gonna go even quicker for these next two times. Follow me, but you can go at your own pace. Squeeze the glutes, little extension, and forward fold. Step or hop back into top of push-up hold and press up into down dog. Slowly roll to top of push-up hold again. Bring that first leg up that you had in your lunge. Left leg if you're with me. Sink those hips. And step together for forward fold. You'd like to rag all the arms here for a second. And slowly roll up. You've got one more. Squeeze the glutes for one last little extension. Relax the shoulders. Down to forward fold. Step or hop back. Up in the top of push up hold. Roll back to top of push up hold. And bring that opposite leg up into a deep lunge and let the hips sink down. Step into that forward fold and slowly roll up. All right, you guys, you should be hopefully feeling a little bit looser with that first round. We're gonna do some hip openers. So if you're not very flexible in the hips, I say this all the time, the hips are the drug door of the body. Be patient with yourself, show yourself some grace. Um, just go with what feels good for your body. Don't feel like you have to push it so hard that you're gonna hurt yourself. Um, but we're gonna start seated. Grab some of water if you'd like at any point. We're gonna start seated in a wide leg. Sit, okay? If you wanna, if you need to bend your knees, that's totally great. Just find a spot that's comfortable for you. And then I want you to make sure that both sit bones are even on the ground. So sometimes I'll just kind of lift up my hips and reset once I'm down. Ankles can be strong, or if you want them relaxed, that's fine, whatever feels best to you. And then you're just gonna slowly go to whatever feels comfortable for you, your limit down the center, making sure both sit bones stay equally weighted. So working on flexibility is really similar to when you get a massage and you're trying to relax the muscle that has a knot in it. You're trying to relax it so that the masseuse can get the tension out. Think about that same concept as you stretch, as you sink into your position. See if you can keep those muscle fibers as relaxed as possible. All right, go ahead and walk yourself back up with your hands. Again, remember it's okay if your knees are bent. We're gonna flip one hand, palms face the sky, and you're gonna slide it forward as you bend over towards your foot, okay? So if, if you're flexible enough, you can relax the shoulder on your leg. But I want you to keep that chest open. So you should be feeling this stretch in your back as well as your leg. Keep breathing deep in the belly. Go ahead and 
and come up and we're gonna switch sides. Keeping that chest open. Making those exhales long. And then we're gonna come back to center. See if you can go even a centimeter deeper than you did before. Check in with those sit bones. Are they even on the ground? And when you're ready, walk yourself back up. We're gonna go into a 90-90. So if you remember this, the easiest way to get into it is 90 degrees behind the knees and then bring both knees to one side. So you've got 90 degrees behind both. And then you're just gonna go forward fold over wherever, whatever span between your knee and your foot, wherever it feels best for you. And just breathe into it. As you get more comfortable, you might move inch a little bit closer to your foot. If you wanna get deeper into your um, thigh and glute muscle. So same thing here, whatever muscle you feel is tensing up is needs to be, is not as flexible as anything else. Think about relaxing that muscle as much as possible, same way you would getting a massage. All right, you guys, walk yourself back up. Bring those knees back to center and flip to the other side. I always adjust my sit bones on this one as well. And then find your spot. As you get more comfortable, see if you might want to adjust, move a little deeper into it. And then walk yourself back up when you're ready. Okay, this next one is very similar. Stay in this same position, don't come up yet. Um, this is awesome, we're gonna get the front of your hips now. So in this position, you're just gonna raise the hips and bring the arm back. So if you need to adjust, that's okay. You adjust your feet, but it's that same 90-90, and then you're just gonna come up on the knees. So squeeze your glutes as you press the hips forward, and you should get a nice deep stretch all across the front of that hip. And you're just gonna hold for a second, and we're gonna rotate. We're gonna alternate each side, okay? So about five seconds when you're standing, or when you're raising those hips. You should get a nice stretch down the side of your body as you bring that arm up as well. We're gonna go five on each side. Excuse me, I meant to say four. You can kind of go at your own pace here. This is an awesome one when, if your hip flexors are ever sore or you ever kind of pull something, Everybody's done that before. This one's a little bit more gentle than a than a deep lunge. And you can leverage your weight a little bit more. So it's nice and gentle if you've ever if you ever tweak your hip flexor. Which, if you didn't know, is that big tendon that's right in the front of your hips that you can feel. All right, last one if you're with my tempo here. All right, go ahead and come back down to seated position. 
This next one is one of my favorites. It's so simple, but it gets your glutes so good. Okay, we're gonna come do a half lotus position, a seated half lotus. So if you come to crisscross applesauce, what that means is you're just gonna put one of your feet up on your knee. You can find where that's most comfortable for you. If that means right out on your knee, great. If you want it a little bit more tucked in on your thigh, great. That's your position. Reset your sit bones to make sure they're evenly weighted. And then first, just go ahead and press that knee down into the ground, the one that's raised. And then we're gonna go ahead and move forward. And you should feel a pretty good stretch in that glute of the raised knee. Breathe deep into the belly. I always want you to lead with your chest and your low back, like you're popping your butt almost. But again, same with our forward fold. If you drop your head just to relax it, you can notice how it kind of deepens the stretch a little bit. Just don't lead with your head. We're, we're sitting in these ones for a little bit longer because we're only going through our hip openers once. All right, as you exhale, can you go a little bit deeper? All right, walk yourself back up. We're gonna switch legs. a good spot for you and just press that knee into the ground. All right, when you're ready, let's start walking it out. In a good spot. Making sure each exhale is longer than your inhale. And see if you can sink a little bit deeper with each one. While you guys are sitting here, if you are somebody, if you are somebody that notices you get a little bit of low back pain after standing for a long time or sitting for a long time, like if you're um, driving for a while, um, I know none of you guys sit for a super, super long time. Um, but start to pay attention to your low ab muscles. You always hear me say cinch up your waistband muscles or pretend like you're trying to turn your hips into a taco. What I mean by that is like you're trying to pull your hip bones together using your muscles, pitching it up. Focus on that more as you're standing and that will take a little pressure off your low back and that should help. For that same exact reason, the more you strengthen your core, the less back pain people tend to have, unless they have an injury. All right, you guys, sink a little bit deeper in for about three more breaths. Relax those glutes. And walk yourself back up. All right, we are moving on to our twists, my favorite. Um, first one is not a twist, but we're just gonna sit back into child's pose. You can have your toes planted or flat, whatever feels better. And just reach those fingertips forward. Just sink those hips back. You guys, we're gonna come back into a lunge. So bring the hips up and then pick one leg. Come up. We're gonna keep this knee planted. I'm gonna show you guys from the front for this one, actually. Keep the knee planted. You'll notice my knee and my front foot are about hip width distance apart. And then really sink those hips down into the ground. The knee can come out a little bit. That's okay. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the arm up. If 
if you're pregnant, you're just gonna twist the other way, okay? Bring the arm up. And notice how I'm really twisting my spine. You're trying to open up your chest as much as possible. Looking at your thumb with your eye. And if it feels good for you, you can bring that arm back behind you. So imagine that I just put sandbags on your hips and they're getting pulled straight into the ground, straight into your mat. All right, go ahead and rainbow that arm back over to the front. And then we're gonna switch legs. You're there, let those hips sink. And when you're ready, open up with that twist. Again, one side's probably gonna be a little bit more flexible than the other. Look at your thumb with your eye. And if you would like to bring that arm back behind your back. Keep sinking those hips deeper. If you're feeling a little bit of popping, that's okay. All right, rainbow that arm back up. And before you come out of this, we're actually gonna go into a hamstring stretch. So keep that foot on the ground. And keep your back as neutral as possible. So you'll notice you probably can't bring it back, bring your hips back very far here and that's okay. Breathe deep. This one's a love-hate for me. My hamstrings are always so tight. <laughs> There's also a lot of correlation between low back pain and super tight hamstrings. So if there's something that you hate stretching the most, it's probably what you need to stretch the most. <laughs> All right, go ahead and switch legs. So that first leg that you were in a lunge for, we're bringing the hips back. And the more you try and flatten your foot in the front, you actually will get a little bit of a stretch across the front of your shin. At least I do. Maybe I'm just super tight. And instead of trying to deepen your stretch by bringing your upper body closer to your knee, I want you to deepen the stretch by extending your low back more, meaning popping your butt more. That's going to be more intense, but it's going to be much, much more effective. All right, you guys, go ahead and bring that back leg in, and we're going to come in for a seated twist. So I'm going to actually face you. So remember which leg you have crossing your body right now. We're coming in for a seated twist. Go ahead and hug your knee here again if you're pregnant. Just hug to the other side. So you might want to adjust your sit bones and then hug that knee in. And then find a good spot on the ground to plant your hand behind you. And open up that chest. Think about elongating your spine as much as possible. I know your breathing may feel a little bit restricted in this position, but I want your thigh to feel your belly pressing against it, ballooning it with every inhale. Let's go for three more big breaths here. I'm gonna switch sides.
Go ahead and switch legs when you're ready. Adjust those sit bones. Hug the knee. And sit tall as you elongate that spine. Looking back with your eyes as well. About three more breaths. We're gonna move back into that left lunge with our twist. So we're gonna do all the same moves in a slightly different order. So just follow me. We're gonna move, not necessarily quicker through it, but just a little bit of a different order. So bring that first leg back into that lunge. Knees planted. Let those hips sink. I talk a lot about trust with your body too. Trust your feet and your knees and your hands to hold you. Your hips aren't gonna totally fall into the floor. You can totally relax all of the muscles around your hip joints. If you wanna twist that arm back. Almost like you're trying to show me or show the camera your sternum. Leading with your sternum. All right, go ahead and rainbow that arm back around the front. And we're gonna move right into that hamstring stretch. So pull the hips back. You can kind of experiment with this, whatever feels good to you. Sometimes I will actually try and rest my elbow just above my kneecap, mainly because it kind of forces me to relax the back of my legs a little bit more but I will say you kind of have to have a certain amount of flexibility to get to that point anyway. If your knees are super bent here, that's okay. It just might not be as effective. So again, your body, your way. All right, and then go ahead and slide that back leg up into that seated twist. Three from the side this time. Hug it in and twist back. My hands planted here. If it feels better for you to have it floating, that's great. Again, like you're trying to square your shoulders to your camera. And show me your sternum. All right, guys, we're gonna do all that on the other side. So opposite lunge. Find your spot. Sink those hips into the ground. Breathe in deep. And when you're ready, bring that arm up. Keep sinking deep into that into those hips. Fold the arm behind you if that feels good. Reminder to relax your glutes. And trust your hands and your feet. They will hold your hips up. All right, go ahead and press into that hamstring stretch. So one thing you can notice here, you guys, is 
is your ankle, is your heel rotating to one side or the other? A lot of times our feet kind of try and open up. That feels a little bit easier. But if you think about rolling your foot over, yeah, it's a lot harder, right? But you're gonna target a little bit more of the outside of that hamstring. So see, maybe not what feels most comfortable, but what feels like it could use the most flexibility here. All right, slide that back leg in for a seated twist. Hug the knee. You need to adjust your sit bones. And look back behind you. Think about dropping that shoulder Keeping it relaxed, out of the ears. And we just have about 60 seconds left, you guys. We're even gonna get out of here a little bit early. Go ahead and twist back to that position. We're gonna go, we're gonna go to back to our child's pose just for a second. Just relax here. If your forehead is pressed down on the ground, I want you to really think about relaxing all the muscles in your neck and in your shoulders. All right, you guys, make your way up to standing. And we're gonna cut back into a forward fold one last time. If you want it to be a little bit wider this time, you can. If you want it to be more narrow this time, you can. It's your last move, so pick what you would like to do today. All right, so we're gonna drop into a forward fold. We're just gonna hang out here for a minute. Remember the weight of your body is shifting to your, the balls of your feet. The reason we do that, shift your weight, is so that your hips can be more right over your feet. All right, so option here, if you would like to interlock the fingers behind your head, get a nice shoulder stretch, just let those hands fall over your head to a comfortable position. And you should get a nice stretch in the front of your shoulder. Keep breathing. Sink into those hips. As you deepen that fold. Let your neck hang. Go ahead and slowly let go of the hands. Roll up one vertebrae at a time. We're gonna get two more moves in. I want you to roll those shoulders back slow and making as big of circles as you can. Five going backwards and five going forward. Don't go too fast. I know people like to do fast reps. <laughs> this is not about speed today. I feel a little crunching in my shoulders. I don't know about you guys, but. You are crushing a soda can between your shoulder blades with every circle. All right, once you hit five of those, we're gonna do a little gentle neck bend, okay? So I want you to grab right above your ear, okay? And remember, we're not pulling down, yanking our neck down, but you're pulling your ear to the side. So that will deepen the stretch all the way from your scalp, all the way down to where your collarbone ends. Really gentle, don't pull too hard. You can kind of play with the angle of your chin here. Bringing it down or up will adjust kind of what muscles you're targeting. Do it feels best. All 
All right, go ahead and switch sides. Really gentle, you guys. One way to really deepen this stretch is to hold a weight in the opposite hand. It'll help pull your shoulder down. Oopsie, it's good. You don't need a very heavy weight, I can tell you that. <laughs> I think that was perfect timing. I think that's the end of my playlist. You guys are awesome. Go ahead and slowly come out of it. If you wanna get a couple neck rolls in, do so. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys for coming to this, this morning and showing up for yourself and for me, um, especially for you guys that don't sit at a desk all day long. I know that this is going to make your Thursday a lot better. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks guys. See you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. Hey, Abby. Yep. Before you yeah. go, um, I was just going to say for hot news, 